In this tutorial, we are going to take upon a classic grasshopper exercise, a grid of circles, that reacts to an attractor point. But we are going to step it up a notch, revisiting our already covered topics. We begin by going back to a previous exercise. Here we established a relationship between the grid of points and an attractor point by measuring the distances and then sorting these distances now let's practice using other methods to establish and manipulate this relationship. We have a grid of points and an attractor point, and I want to create a circle at each of the grid points, associating the radius of these circles with their distances from the attractor point. To do that, I'm going to use the remap numbers component. Let's connect distances to the value input, Let's use the bounds component to create the source domain, leave the default value for the target domain, and connect remapped numbers to radius input to create the circles. We have the circles created, but they are all located at the origin point of the default Rhino XY plane. Let's input the grid points as center points to distribute them on a grid. The definition works fine, but the circles are overlapping because the domain for radiuses is too large. Let's use a panel to change the target domain for the remap numbers component. And I will also change the color to white for this panel. So this is the classic grid of circles. Let's spice it up a bit. Let's go under Curve, Primitive and choose another geometry. Let's choose the rectangle. As we drop the component on canvas, we can see the default geometry preview in Rhino viewport. The X and Y inputs define the size of the rectangle. The last input gives us a radius option to fill at corners. And then similarly to the circle, we have an input for the base planes. The component outputs rectangle as generic data and the length of a rectangle curve, the perimeter. Let's start with the size domains. I will use a panel and I would like my rectangle to fit inside one square unit. So let's type in from 0 to 1 and connect to X and Y inputs. We get the rectangle, the size is correct, but we have an issue with the base plane. I would like to have the base plane at the center of the rectangle. The easiest way to achieve that is to change the X and Y input domains to be from minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. Let's input the grid of points for the base plane location and we get a grid of equal sized squares. I'm gonna double click on a wire here and create a relay object and name it for clarity. So when we were creating circles, we were using remapped numbers to define the sizes for the circles directly. But with the rectangle, the size is fixed, so in this instance we will use remap numbers to scale the rectangles. You will find the scale component under Transform Affine. For the geometry input, we want to use the rectangles, the grid of points as center points for scaling, and remap numbers as scaling factors. I'm going to turn off the grid and the rectangle preview and adjust the end of the target domain. Everything works fine. Let's now go back to the grid proportions and spacings. Since we have a fixed rectangle size here, it would make sense to tie the grid size and the cell size or spacing between the points. I'm going to use the construct domain tool for this purpose. You will find it under math domain. With this component, we get an option to use number sliders to define the numeric domain. I'm going to set the start to zero and the end to 10. And now we can use the same number slider, the end of the domain, to define the number of steps for the range. I'm going to reorganize the definition on canvas and we're ready to move forward. Let's try changing the attracting geometry from point to curve. Let's grab the container for curves and reference curve geometry from Rhino to Grasshopper. Since the distance component only works with point inputs, it's better to use the pull points in this instance. For the first input, the points to search from are the grid points and the geometry that pulls is the curve. Let's look at the pull point a bit deeper now. To illustrate the relationship here, I'm going to use the line component and create lines between grid points and the points on the curve. 
I'm also going to reduce the number of points in the grid. So with the closest points only option, the pull point component finds the closest point on the curve from each point in the grid. With the all connections option, the number of points on a curve stays the same, the points are the same, but the data structure is different. And because of that, the line component returns all possible connections between these sets of points. In this instance, the points are grafted, so each point belongs to a separate list, and with the closest only option, the points are in the same single list. This relationship is somewhat similar to the cross-reference holistic method that we have covered in previous tutorials. We will talk in depth about data trees in future tutorials, but this is a good opportunity to emphasize the importance of data structure. Let's replace the distance component with the pull point. I'm going to turn off the preview of the points on a curve, make some space, and let's add the graph mapper to change the linear relationship to something different. I'm going to go with the sine function. Let's input the remapped numbers and connect the graph mapper output as the scale factor. I'm going to normalize the target domain for the remapped numbers from 0 to 1, and as I do that, the scale component shows an error, because some scale factors on a list are 0, and the geometry output returns empty items. This might or might not be an issue, depending on the definition. We can fix it inside the graph mapper by changing the start of the Y domain, or if we are not concerned about the precision, simply manipulating graph control points. Let's try using a subdomain. In my case, the full source domain is somewhere from 0 to 7. I'm going to use a panel and type in 0 to 5. So I am changing the proportion now. I'm going to try smaller, 0 to 3 looks good. Let's connect the clipped output to the graph mapper. If I change the frequency of the sine function, the graph mapper only affects the points within the defined source domain. We can also increase the grid. Let's see how this would look. It's time to think in terms of fabrication and practice our data filtering skills. Let's say we would like to create a perforated panel using this pattern, so we would be cutting out the squares from the sheet material. How could we remove the smallest squares from this pattern to rationalize the cutting process? Please pause the video and think through the steps before proceeding. For this exercise, we are going to use conditional operators and filter data. Let's go under Math, Operators and choose Larger Than. Connect the graph mapper output to the A input and use a number slider or a panel to define the B input. Pay attention to the graph mapper output bounds to pick suitable values. We need an additional component here to filter data. Let's go under Sets, Sequence and choose Cool Pattern since we are only interested in the true output values. Connect the scale output as the data to filter and larger than output as the cold pattern. Notice if I change the frequency of the sine wave, the smallest squares closest to the attractive curve also disappear. If this is unwanted, we could of course filter data using another parameter. We could use the distance from the attractor curve. We could also use different methods to reduce the number of smaller squares. Let's try using gradual random reduction. Under Sets, Sequence, let's pick the random component to generate a list of random numbers. We can keep the default domain from 0 to 1 and define the number of values using the list length component, counting the remapped numbers or distances. And let's also input the seed value. We are going to use conditional operators again. I'm going to choose larger than. Let's connect the graph mapper to A and the random sequence to B, and then input the Boolean results as a call pattern. So now we are randomly reducing the number of squares, but mostly the smaller squares. 
we are comparing randomly generated numbers with scale factors. So that relates to the sizes of the squares. And the smaller the scale factor, A input, the greater the probability that the random value in B input will be larger. The clipped output would perform similarly to the previous example. We could also use different relationships, different functions for reductions. I'm going to pick the conic type. In this specific instance, there is no difference between using full or clipped values, but it might differ depending on the graph type. Let's think of a different fabrication method, a scenario when it would be advantageous to have fixed square sizes rather than hundreds of slightly different ones. Maybe we would like to use molds and casts or solid timber bars. So we sort of need to remap numbers again. And in such cases, the most convenient way is to use the find similar member component. It's located under sets, sets. The find similar member finds members in set input closest to data input. It returns the closest member and its indices. So let's try that out. I'm going to connect a single value 20 to the D input and list values to the S input. I'm searching for the value closest to 20. So the nearest value is 24 and its index is 1. That's correct. Let's try 60. We can also search multiple values. Let's think what would happen if we only input single value 50 to S. All the hit output values are returned as 50 because that's the only value to choose from. That's the most similar one because there's no other option. This means that we can control the number of unique values in our list. So far we have been working with integers only. Let's try floating numbers. The results are incorrect. This is because similarly to the member index, this component also works with other simple data types. And since we are using panels here, we might need to force data type conversion. So let's do that. Let's go under params, primitive and choose floating numbers. Now the output values are correct. Let's go back to our definition and incorporate the find similar member component here. All the remap numbers are data to go through and we want to assign them the most similar values from the fixed size panel. We have two issues here. First, let's turn off the multi-line data option for the panel. And the second, we need to force data type conversion. Let's connect similar member hit output as scale factors. I'm also going to normalize the remap number's target domain and add a graph mapper to our definition. In the Rhino viewport, we can see three prominent groups of squares. Of course, if we would use more fixed sizes, not just three, we would get more gradual results. I encourage you to try that, but for the purposes of this tutorial, three is enough. Let's go under Sets, Sequence and grab the Jitter component. So I want to shuffle the fixed scale factors, the find similar member hit output. The jitter shuffling strength is defined by a floating number between 0 and 1. Make sure to create a number slider with at least 3 decimals. And don't forget the seed input, these are integer values. Let's assign the shuffled values as scale factors. Notice nothing has changed because the shuffling strength is zero, but I would like to bring back the attractor point to make the explanation clearer. The radial relationship that the attractor point creates is evident, but when I increase the shuffling strength, the noise is distributed horizontally and we are losing the effect of the attractor point. This happens because the shuffling depends on the order in which the data is stored. The point list display shows us that we have created this grid ordered in horizontal rows from left to right. 
to establish a relationship between point order and their distances from the attractor point, we're going to use the sort list component. Let's input grid points as optional values to sort and the distances as sortable keys. Let's have a look at the new point order. Now the jitter will be shuffling the square sizes based on their distances from the attractor point. Remember that we can change the seed value for a variety of combinations and also use other types of attracting geometries. This is it for this exercise. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you would like to access additional learning material, I invite you to visit our website. Keep learning and I will see you in the next video.